Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Yesho Industries Limited organized by Orient Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Bhavya Shah from Orient Capital. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Shah. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for connecting to Yasho Industries Q1 FY24 Business Con Call. Today we have with us from the management, Mr. Parag Javeri, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Yayesh Javeri, Full-Time Director, and Mr. Deepak Kaku, CFO. Before we proceed with the call, I had like to give a small disclaimer that the conference call may contain some forward-looking statements which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectation of the company has on date. A detailed disclaimer has also been given in the company's investor presentation. I hope everyone had a chance to go through it, which has been uploaded on Stock Exchange today. I would now like to hand over the call to the management. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I extend a warm welcome on behalf of Yasuo Industries Limited to all of you who have, who have joined us for this results conference. We appreciate your time and interest in our company's performance. I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through the financial results and investor presentation which have been uploaded on Stock Exchange. As we step into the new financial year, we acknowledge the prevailing headwinds in the global economy characterized by challenging macroeconomic conditions, high cost inventories, and significant price drop. This uncertainty has created a complex business environment necessitating resilience and adaptability. However, despite these headwinds, Yasuo Industries has continued to navigate through these turbulent times. We have devised robust strategy to ensure a more resilient performance in the upcoming quarters, safeguarding the interest of our stakeholders. During our attention to our Q1 performance, our considered revenue from operation was 150 crores. We have achieved volume growth of about 8% on quarter-on-quarter -on -quarter basis, even amid challenging conditions. A significant contributing factor to our maintained margins have been our focus on improving the product mix and implementing dynamic pricing actions. This strategic approach has enabled us to optimize revenues and ensure operational efficiency. Yasuo Industries operate into two core categories in first consumer chemicals, including food entry options and aroma chemicals, contribute to approximately 19% of our revenue. The second category, industrial chemicals, encompass rubber, lubricant, and other specialty chemicals, according, accounting for over 81% of our total revenue. In terms of our operational performance, we are currently operating at about 75% of our capacity, we see some temporary slowdown in certain segments of the market, which we expect to recover by end of this year. We remain steadfast in our commitment to uphold our long-term goals and objectives while nurturing the growth of the company. Diversifying our revenue stream, our overseas sales contribute over 64% of our total revenue. We have, been engage, uh, we have been engaging actively with our customers and believe there is a potential to increase our offering over long term. In line with our growth strategy, our CapEx, in, CapEx initiative, the Greenfield project at Pakhajan, are well underway and expected to commence production in early FY25. We intend to focus on a few products from our existing portfolio. Following this expansion, we can accomplish total capacity will be approximately 30,000 metric tons per annum. In conclusion, we are optimistic about the trajectory of our business and excited about the future prospects of Yasuo Industries Limited. 
our commitment to creating long term value for our stakeholder coupled with product financial management and strategic initiative will be instrumental in, in sustaining our growth in coming years so that is from my side we will now open the floor for q and a thank you very much Thank you. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. The first question comes from the line of Anurud Shetty from Solidarity Investment Managers. Please go ahead, sir. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I had two questions. Uh, so I understand that you know our margins right now are you know a bit low because of the. Uh, Hello. It seems his line is disconnected. The next question comes from the line of Suchi Nahar. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity, first of all. Uh, so, sir, my question is regarding uh, looking at some of your peers uh, who did huge capex. Now they have gone into losses due to low utilization and high depreciation in finance costs. So, how confident are we, given our capex size, that we will utilize the capacities fully? And second, what will be the utilization in the first year for the KPEX is commercialized? Yeah. Well, as long as our confidence on utilizing the CAPEX is uh, still uh, very high, reason being that uh, the many of our large customers are waiting for us to start the production in the new facility, which will come on board after that only. Reason being that the, the, the demands are high and our current capacity is uh, very limited to offer them. So our current production site products have been approved, but they are, they want to validate from the new production site, and then only they will come on board. We intend to start the trials by uh, October, November somewhere. If everything goes well, we get all permission in place. And the commercial should uh, start sometime in uh, early uh, 25. FY25. Uh, Number? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, and uh, second question, uh, if I can take on. Uh, so, can you give me some qualitative color on the new molecules that you are going to make in the new plant? And who all are we competing with in India? Are we competing with China too in the new molecule? Well, it's a mix of that. China is always practically present in every field of the uh, chemical segment. So one cannot say that China is not present. But our major focus is where we are taking uh, lead is uh, number one, making India. That is going to help us a lot in the current phase of the growth. And number two, uh, we are going to get into the well-established market that is the European and American market, which will help us to grow the further business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Anirudh Shetty, Solidarity Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, is my voice audible now? Yes. yes. So, uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, my first question is, Right now our margins are, you know, a bit subdued because of the uh, the you know, dynamic environment. But you know, in 2026, when we expect to reach a more optimum utilization level, uh, what what do you think the normalized EBITDA margin of the uh, of the company could look like? Well, this is, I think, uh, the the quarter one was uh, very much. Uh, you can use the word unusual quarter, uh, very much unpredicted, a uh, lot of uh, high cost inventory in place, uh, unexpected uh, price drop by the competitor or some part of the world, 
and the sentiment, you know, the prices are going down, going down. So that has uh, reduced the margin. Couple of uh, product uh, in a special segments has uh, very limited demand currently. Uh, so that has uh, put a little pressure on our margin. We are working hard to ensure that uh, we come back to the uh, margins of 18% first. And uh, we have a growth or the, you know, the commitment from the customers coming in for the future business is very, very strong. The indications are coming that they need a product. People are coming back to us. So that is a sign. And we hope that we should be able to influence margin in a next uh, few quarters, not immediate quarter, but uh, in, a, in a second half, definitely the margin will improve for the VAPI operation. And uh, it's too early to talk about the uh, uh, FY25 and FY26 margin today, how the situation evolved globally, that is going to take a precision. But uh, uh, with the, mainly the capex coming into the industrial segment, which is giving us a better margin, will definitely improve as a margin for the, from here. Okay. Uh, and so my second question is, you know, you mentioned the Make in India opportunity. So uh, can you elaborate more on that? And uh, can you also uh, give some more alert around, you know, opportunities for uh, domestic manufacturers to uh, benefit as, you know, the government wants to do uh, more Make in India and, you know, more and more requirements, uh, uh, you know, for uh, our input on the customer to source from domestic guys. To, uh, you know, talk about that opportunity as well. Well, see, the last two years, the making India, the particularly last 12 months, the government is pushing hard to many large PSUs and the large companies to use the local component in their production. And uh, that is, uh, in that respect, we are getting more inquiries, more businesses getting transferred into reality step by step. So we hope uh, with a new uh, plan coming up on a stream uh, that we should be able to capitalize on that. And uh, that should be also help us to uh, utilize uh, you know, the new facility. Got it. Uh, and one thing question, uh, you know, the uh, 17 and a half thousand uh, expansion that we're doing, uh, you know, how much of that uh, expansion is uh, you know, basis visibility from customers who are already, uh, you know, working with Yasho and, you know, for products that they are already supplying to vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, new customers that we will have to, you know, uh, look for to, you know, fill the balance. Yes, we have to bring in a couple of new customers with whom we are already in contact for last uh, several months. Uh, they all have shown the very keen interest. As I said, that the trial will start somewhere in October, November. Once we give them a sample, they will come and do the audit of the facility. So that's why we are expecting a commercialization only by the early 20, FY25. Uh, we need to, you know, that will take a minimum three to six months or sometime a little longer time. And uh, that was another reason why we are giving guidance that the uh, first only we can utilize between 60 to 65 percent in the capacity. Because uh, even the Q1 of 25, FY25 will not be a, a robust, but it will you know, slowly ramp up the sales from that facility. Got it. Thank you, sir. I'll just join back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Darshan Shah. He is an individual investor. Hello. Yes, Darshan. Yeah, good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. So my first question is to a new facility at Pakajan. So what kind of product mix are we looking at between lubricants, uh, rubber chemicals, and um, specialty chemicals? It will be a... Uh, sir, we are not going to give clear guidance here on that part, but it is a, a product are from the industrial segment of company, which is coming online. Okay. Okay, sir. And so my second question is, uh, I see in your investor presentation we mentioned about phase one, and so I believe we have more uh, 45 to 50 percent of land available for phase two. So what's next in phase two? Is there any guidance relating the relating to same? Well, uh, uh, Darshan, uh, currently.
currently our focus is to establish the facility and the ramp up the production. We will look at the phase two only in the beginning of 26. How quickly we are able to ramp up and the sell the you know the production and utilize the, the, the capex. Once we achieve 70 percent loss, 75 percent, we always think about the next capex. So already we have planned in a drawing room, but we don't talk about it unless until we achieve there. Okay, sir. So the, I understand that. Is just that uh, would we be expecting a similar kind of uh, you know, facilities there to make similar kind of products, so we'll be trying to venture into something, uh, you know, new. Well, the uh, company always uh, gets into the chemistry where they are comfortable and where they have been established, okay? We don't, anything new always is uh, challenging, and uh, anything new, what we introduce is always first come from WAPI facility and then ramp up for any, when we see the opportunity of growth, we take it to the, you know, Pakaj. Okay, sir. So then, uh, if you could be, you know, then would be right to ask you at this point of time, uh, what would be the kind of in, uh, investment? Because I see about 400 crores has gone into phase one. So a similar kind of thing in phase two also? No, I don't think so, Darshan. That is not required. Uh, of this uh, 400 crores, almost 250 crores has gone for the land, land development and the long term cafe. You know, the facility we need to build up, like a upfront treatment plant, utility blocks, warehousing. So when we go for the next phase, we don't need any of this thing. Admin block, everything is ready now. So it's just the production the equipment and the production building required. So we don't need so much okay. capital. Okay, sir. So then that has, that should help our uh, profile, financial profile as well. Okay. Thank you for this guidance, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The next question comes from the line of Aman Thadani of Solidarity Investment Managers. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, Parag bhai, my first question is, by my calculation, we did an EBITDA per ton of around 1 lakh this quarter. But basis the past conference calls, we guide for a long-term sustainable EBITDA per, no per ton number of 70 to 80,000. Now my question is that 3 years out, with more proportion of high margin industrial revenues, with more scale and more direct sales versus distribution, what could this EBITDA per ton number look like? Let me be honest, say my dear friend, we always like to give a personal guidance rather than a third turn absolute guidance. Uh, when the, you are in a current situation where the prices are bottom, the third turn is difficult to sustain the market. But uh, what we uh, try is to do the personal trades uh, generally where we work on that and the, that is slightly under pressure. We have seen that our consumption ratio or the market ratio has a little bit deteriorated. First, we want to improve that and then we'll take it further from there. For us, uh, as a chemical company, the quantum of production, quantum of sales is a criteria rather than we look at the absolute number. If we have a quantum, number will fall in automatically in the line. And uh, what is a good sign for Yasho that uh, in the last quarter, we have able to sell more quantities than the previous quarter and that is a good sign for us. And that says that we are able to recover the what we lost or we are holding on and we are adding some more, uh, you know, volumes. Okay, sir. So my uh, second question is, uh, what is the current net debt position and what would be the incremental debt required till we complete our phase one expansion? I think our total debt, what we are looking at is about 500 CR. That's till the FY24. That's the number what we have, including working capital. Okay. And sir, one request, like in your quarterly presentation, can you also give the volume breakup number among the two segments, that is consumer and uh, industrial, so that it would help us better understand the drivers of our performance? I think we can do that. There's not a problem. We'll do an next time. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Saloni Shah. He, she is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I have two questions. Uh, first one being, uh, sir, can you comment on the macro factors as to like how it's playing out? Because we can see some pricing change from the Chinese players. 
So could you just uh, help me throw some light on how aggressive or how this pricing change from the Chinese players is uh, affecting the current uh, scenario? I think Saloni, the home market prices has a swung drastically, except some minerals and the natural product. Everything has been uh, crashed, maybe a 50 percent or 100 percent here, uh, purely due to the uh, low demand in a in a part of the world, which everyone knows. So that is causing a problem, and uh, also the Europe uh, has a little. Uh, uh, little growth or no growth, uh, which is also causing a big problem. Uh, and uh, that we believe, uh, or kind of a sense we are getting today that the pricing are being bottomed out looks like. We see somewhere some spark in a certain category. Uh, and uh, if the, after the summer vacation, which is now going on, that is in some, somewhere in mid-September, we will have more clarity how strongly the Western world is coming back to the, you know, business. Okay, sir. Okay. And my second question is, sir, could you provide an update on the demand trends in our uh, key end user industries across Europe and the states? Like, I'm particularly interested in understanding how the demand is showing up, shaping up. Well, uh, already I said that the uh, exports are slow, but mainly into the segment in Europe which has, uh, we have seen that drastically drop in uh, our export Europe. Uh, to our surprise, the uh, U.S. is showing a very strong sign. Also, the Latin America is also showing a uh, good sign, uh, along with that, the uh, Middle East. So, except Europe, we see the good sign, which is coming up in the uh, last two months, and uh, we see the revival of the business in uh, all this uh, part of the world. Uh, also, the part of the Asia is not sure doing good, but uh, North America, South America, Middle East, all this this is a has a picked up the uh, you know the uptake or the we are getting uh, more business uh, maybe uh, for immediate supply or the next three months supply. So we see the positive sign here. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Shubham Ajmera from Aurora Family Office. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Thanks for providing me the opportunity. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask uh, about the capacity utilization which we are having currently. And uh, post the completion of this ongoing CapEx, uh, so normally how much time it will take to reach the optimum utilization for this uh, new CapEx? For the new facility, it will take a two years to. We believe that within two years, we should be able to achieve the optimum capacity utilization. So, by the FY26, uh, the company should run at 90% utilization minimum. Okay. And so, by in next two to three years, uh, any other capex plan which are on, other than the ongoing capex? Plan? No, not at the moment. So we will come back to you guys only in the beginning of 26. Understood. So we'll reach this uh, utilization to optimum level by financial year 26, and then we'll may do some new capexes for the ongoing work. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, the, that's what we ought to do. First, we achieve 70% relation. Then we talk about the further uh, capex. Still, there, there's no point. Okay. Got it, sir. And just uh, one more question. Like, uh, what would be the margins on this, uh, overall margins, by once uh, we reach the optimum utilization in that case? I think we are expecting a reasonable, uh, you know, that uh, increase in utilization. Uh, currently, we are at a 17, 18 percent, and we should uh, at least uh, improve a couple of notch there, two, three percent of further, 20 plus minimum. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Sir. That's all from my side. Thank you, participants. If you wish to ask a question, please press star and one now. We have our next question coming from the line of Samyak Jain. He is an individual investor. Hello. I'm, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. This quarter, we show a decline in the top line by 16% on a year-on-year -on -year basis. Uh, like, was that completely of both volume dip as well as the price dip? Also, can you please quantify that between price and volume? 
Well, I, I already said we have grown in volume by 6% compared to uh, last quarter to this quarter. But quarter one of last year to quarter one of this year, we have declined in volume. But uh, when I'm comparing with my uh, Q4 of 23 to Q1 of 24, we have uh, gained in volume. So when the, also when we talk about the Q1 of 23, the uh, lot of factors were uh, influenced and that time the demand was robust and the price was high, so the uh, top line was there. The last uh, six months, the raw material prices has declined sharply, and that is also affecting the selling price. So that's why uh, top line has been reduced. Uh, as I said, our uh, we are uh, happy that we should be able to improve our volume growth in this quarter compared to previous quarter. So that is a Q4 of 24, 23. Okay, okay, okay. So my next question will be like in FY24, what are your growth projections? Uh, will you continue to maintain the 10 to 12% of the growth rate as previously guided? Or alternatively, will the new capacity coming in Q4 significantly contribute to FY24 numbers? Number one, uh, let me answer the second question first. Uh, uh, new facility is not going to contribute any uh, top line in uh, current year. We don't anticipate any major sales from there. Okay, so that is not there. In uh, so now, uh, let me answer question one. We do expect a growth in this year. Last year, what we did is about 90% uh, of our utilization. Uh, overall, we uh, try to overcome that. Now our current capacity is 12,500 metric ton in Wapi, and we we wish that we will be achieve again 95% utilization in this year. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, if you have a question, please press the star and one. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, friends, for joining into this call and looking forward to see you again after a uh, you know two calls. Thank you. On behalf of Yasho Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.